Bismillahirrahmanirrahim In the name of Allah God, the most beneficent and most merciful Causes of concrete dam failures Today in this lecture, I shall briefly describe the causes or reasons for the concrete dam failures In my next lecture, I shall describe about the causes for other type of dams earth filled and rock filled dam failures a geologist speaks is my youtube channel please subscribe it and share it and also provide your comments for its improvement generally following are common reasons for dam failures overtopping foundation failures water pressure and seepage structure failures geological reasons and others here i have categorized different the causes into different categories but in fact all these causes are interrelated if there is a water pressure or seepage it will affect the foundation and it will cause a foundation failure or it will also cause the structure failures if there are geological reasons there is a poor geology then also it will affect the foundation failures it will lead towards the structure failure and other failures in this table the percentages of different types of failures have been uh, described i called in its bulletin 991 in 2020 referred by richard donley and am acharya they have categorized the failure of dams overtopping 44% of the dams in the world have been failed due to overtopping 34% dams with piping and seepage 20% dams have been failed due to structural failures and 2% due to other reasons costa in 1985 he defined as 34% dams were failed due to overtopping 30% dams were failed due to foundation defects 28% dams were failed due to piping and seepage and 8% dams were failed due to other reasons now i shall describe one by one the reasons the most common reason for dam failures is overtopping it happens when reservoir level tops the height or capacity of the dam i'll show you one picture to make you understand this is overtopping but this is not overtopping of a dam it is over overtopping of a coffer dam but this is just to show you the picture to give you the concept overtopping may cause the region of abutments or foundation at the toe of the dam so this overtopping can er erode its abutments abutments are these are the sides of the valley or sides of the mountain where the dam rests this is right abutment and towards this which is not shown in the picture is left abutment so this overtopping can erode the rock at the contact of dam and the rock creating gaps and seepage paths which later can lead to the dam failure and also this overtopping water when falls down at the toe of the dam it will also cause the erosion of the rock and foundation and that will ultimately cause or that will lead towards the foundation failures and other structural failures overtopping may be due to following reasons so this overtopping this is first is inadequate capacity of spillway is the common cause for the overtopping so if the spillway capacity is less it has not been properly designed it has faulty design so if some due to heavy rains or heavy floods it will not become capable for discharging the extra water then it will cause the overtopping this is in this picture you can say this is the spillway of a dam and this top is the crest of the dam if this spillway has not been designed keeping into in view the maximum probable flood then if some maximum flood will come it will not be capable for discharging its flood water and it will overtop the dam causing its failure 
the other reason is the blockage of sp spillway due to settlement of the crest so it is another reason if this is the crest it settles down due to some reason due to some defects it will cause the blockage of the spillway and next is erosion of spillway due to poor quality construction or, or poor quality material so if during construction poor material quality material has been used or construction is not according to the standards then later it can cause its erosion of spillway or damage of the of this spillway high floods and heavy rains exceed the capacity of the spillway the same as i have, i have explained that if the spillway has not been designed according to the maximum probable flood then heavy high floods and heavy rains can exceed the capacity of the spillway landslide at upstream of a dam in the reservoir so in this upstream in the reach of this river somewhere in upstream side if some landslide occurs the passage of the water will be blocked water will accumulate and at a certain limit it will break that landslide and it will rush in the form of flood towards the dam and it will overtop dam and other structures will which will come into its passage failure of an upstream dam if there is some another dam located at upstream of this dam if that fails due to some reason all of its accumulated water will come down and it will damage the downstream dams and other structures that will be that will come into its passage concrete dams may be stand sufficiently longer time against overtopping if following measures are taken proper foundation treatment against poor unfavorable foundation geology if keeping considering the geology if it is poor and the foundation treatment should be carried out accordingly keeping in view the geology use of good quality material with good quality construction material so if the good quality material has been used and good quality work has been carried out then this concrete dam can withstand sufficiently longer time against overtopping now second reason foundation failures foundation failures are caused by poor foundation geology and inadequate foundation treatment are due to inaccurate calculations of dam design parameters following are the contributing factors for the foundation failures inaccurate design parameters for dam mass with respect to the foundation geology causing unequal settlement or shearing of foundation sliding at the foundation along weak horizontal planes so if there are horizontal planes at the foundation i will show you one picture to make you understand what are the horizontal planes so this rock you can see this is these are horizontal layering or horizontal bedding this is weak rock this is component rock if dam is founded on this rock and not properly treated its foundation it it can cause relative unequal settlement this competent layer or above that at the top and bottom is the incompetent layer this layer can slide along this incompetent layer wash out of soluble lenses and seepage throughout through rock giants so i will show you another picture in this picture you see washable material has been washed out at leaving the gaps and cavities in the rock this is also another picture you can see this big cavity this will need to be treated to to be filled and to be considered during construction of a dam it is lying some under under some dam foundation the other other contributing factor is open joints and cavities in the foundation can cause large volumes of seepage and piping i will show you another picture this is rock at right abutment of a dam these are the big cavities and for its foundation treatment more than 850 tons of cement was used to fill the cavities for its cons uh, consolidation grouting and for its its cavity grouting and in that cement cement water and sand was also added in that material to backfill these cavities this water pressure and roller water is very important factor and basically 
only two factors water pressure and geological reasons these are the main governing factors leading towards the dam failures so water is a major driving force that plays its role by one or the other way in almost all types of dam failures water pressure is a general term that includes pressure within a reservoir pore pressure uplift pressure seepage and piping these factors must be considered during design and stability analysis of a dam a proper drainage system should be provided to give a safe passage to the water and to relieve its uplift pressure now the varying head wa- head water and tail water pressure across the dam tends to push it towards down downstream side and gravity tends to resist it causing instability to the dam i will show you another picture see this picture in this picture you can see that in the reservoir water level is very high this water is exerting pressure on the dam and dam if it is not sufficiently resistant it now it is not properly designed it will it will become unstable due to this pressure water pressure within the soil or concrete is commonly referred as pore pressure the pore water pressure acts uniformly in all plants pore pressure in a dam foundation or in an abutment reduces the shear strength of the foundation water pressure acting upward on the base of the concrete dam is referred as uplift pressure the the uplift pressure reduces the effective weight of the downstream of the downstream portion of a dam and can substantially reduce dam's stability this is very important factor and that needs to be considered seriously because this can lead towards the ta- dam failure so you see in this picture that reservoir is full of with, with full of water water table is very high on this side and downstream side there is the water head is lower than this upstream side so definitely this water is seeping below the foundation and through the foundation rock joints through the foundation rock and this is the and water always try to maintain its head so the water which will be seeping through the below the foundation dam foundation of the dam and through the rock giants that will try to maintain its head equal to this upstream reservoir level so if it will not find the way it will push the dam towards upstream side causing instability to the dam in this picture you can see and for this purpose drainage galleries are constructed in the dam to relieve this uplift pressure so the, in this picture this is a cross section of a dam this is a crest of a dam and this is at the base of the dam a drainage gallery has been constructed and this drainage gallery is punctured and uh, perforated pipes are installed as a drain drain holes drain wells to relieve the uplift pressure so i these red arrows i have shown this is showing that the water which is seeping below this foundation that will try to push up the dam structure causing instability i will show another picture this is drainage gallery there as i have shown you in the section these are the li- a series of drain holes constructed here this picture was taken when these yet these drain holes were not functional and i will show you another separate picture of a drain hole so this is one drain hole this is has been drilled 24 meters below the dam foundation heaped and this water is coming below 24 meters below the dam foundation and its pressure is being released into the drainage gallery otherwise if it will not be released it will try to push up the dam and it will cause instability the other reason causing the piping and water pressure and seepage is the internal erosion causing piping this can occur along hydraulic structures spillways conduits or cracks if there are some conduits and pipes are placed in the dam structure just for crossing some cables or some other conduits and that pipes which which are placed in the dam structure the contact of that those pipes with the concrete then leak can lead a seepage path if quality work is not observed and the, the contact between the pipes and the concrete can lead to a seepage path 
and if there are some cracks in the concrete and water can start seeping and a piping can can develop through those cracks rainfall and regional water levels may change local water levels which in turn may affect water pressure distribution so before the construction of a dam there was a groundwater regime in the area some seepage so there was some groundwater levels there was a river and some equilibrium was established between the underground springs and everything when a dam is constructed due to its construction all groundwater regime is changed a reservoir is constructed it causes a high water level in the reservoir that will seep into the surrounding areas and also due to tunnel tunnels constructions the seepage paths already developed springs all are intersected and all of this construction and then by the construction of dam downstream side water level water reduces and in upstream side uh, due to reservoir construction water level rises so it will disturb the local e groundwater equi equilibrium which was our groundwater regime which was previously working all of this should be considered during designing of a dam that what will be the future situation of the groundwater by construction of a tunnel by construction of a reservoir so all these factors should be considered during calculation of the design parameters and designing of the dam all the aspects should be properly understood when designing dam next reason is structural failures this can be due to shear failure causing slips or dislodgement of materials sloughs bulges cracks or other irregularities irregularities generally are signs of instability and may indicate structural failures structural failure of a spillway reservoir or other appurtenances may lead to failure of the dam cracking settlement and slides are more common signs of structural failures so if somewhere in the reservoir in somewhere slide some slides occur or some heave occurs or some cracks are observed in into the structures that may lead towards the structural failures geological reasons as i have told you before that geological reasons and water pressures and seepage are the main factors leading towards the dam failures so apart from other reasons majority of the dam failures throughout the world were triggered due to poor foundation geology geological defects are the major contributing factors for the dam foundation failures shears faults alternate layers of competent and incompetent rock layering so in this picture as i have shown you already before the these are alternate beds of competent and incompetent rock they may slide along each other due to the weight of the dam or unequal settlement this is one of the geological reason and other you can say this is see you can see this is a core drilling through a rock foundation rock and you can see these competent rock interbedded with shear rock so it was competent rock it was shear and crushed rock it was crushed if this is poor rock weak rock this is a bit competent rock so they may slide along these alternate poor and competent beds i will show you another picture you can see this is sandstone hard rock and behind is mudstone weak rock and polished giant surface this rock which was at the back of the sandstone that could not bear the weight of this during construction and slope uh, excavation this incompetent rock could not bear the weight of this competent rock and in spite of having 15 meter long rock anchors this rock was rock slid down and causing instability to the foundation and to the construction this picture you can see this is also polished surface of incompetent rock so the rock was slid uh, along this polished surface causing instability to the dam and instability to this tower crane next are the other reasons other reasons are not so significant to cause catastrophic or complete failure of a dam but these 
other reasons might be the contributing factors to increase the risks of, risks of dam failures. Inadequate drainage system. The drainage system is not adequate to relieve the uplift pressure. As I have ex explained before you, if drainage galleries have not been constructed properly and it, uh, these are not capable to relieve the uplift pressure, then it may cause uh, instability to the dam structure. Seepage and piping problems could not be properly controlled. So before the dam construction, uh, as I have told you that regional groundwater levels will be changed, regional groundwater regime will be changed. All of these things should be anticipated and designing should be uh, car carried out accordingly. Otherwise, seepage or piping problems may occur. As I told you before, that drainage galleries are constructed to reduce, to relieve the uplift pressure. Drainage gallery in the concrete dam is provided and a line of drain holes is drilled in the foundation through this gallery to relieve uplift pressure. So I have shown you that this picture again, I will show you again. These are the series of line of drain holes drilled through the, into the foundation that will relieve the uplift pressure. Among the other causes is earthquake. There is no record of concrete dam having failed catastrophically or completely due to an earthquake. But an earthquake can destabilize the dam leading to the failure. Reservoir induced earthquakes. When a large dam is constructed and impounded water in the reservoir exerts pressure on the floor. Earthquakes of different magnitudes have been reported after impounding large reservoirs. Gate failure. If spillway gates fail to work, then spillway cannot function properly. Next are the temperature variations. Concrete gravity arch or you, or you can say arc and other concrete dams deform elastically in response to temperature variations and changing reservoir loads. Inelastic movement indicate potential instability. So due to temperature variations, the dams expand and contract. There are construction giants are provided into the dams to accommodate this expansion and this contraction. I will show you the picture of a giant meter. This, these giant meters are installed at the construction giants. At this end is fixed at one side of the joint and this end is fixed at the other end of the joint. This is cover box. This is to avoid its damage. So after, after its installation, it is covered and fixed with this cover. This is a cable and data is collected by a data logger by connecting this table. So if the due to temperature variation, the giant is expanding dilation, they, these two parts will move away from each other and this will, this will facilitate to move it. So if the giant will expand, these will move away from each other and if giant will contract, these will move towards each other. I will show you one graph showing this variation and if this remember if this variation is elastic then this is not this will not cause any instability problem but if this is inelastic that once the joint has been expanded and it is it has not come back to its previous position then this will be the concern for the stability in this graph you see this graph in this graph you see these are the joint meters graph readings taken and graphs are uh, prepared to see the effect of the temperature so if this graph moves towards this side this is dilation and if it moves toward this side it's contraction so you see this this reading was taken at 9 30 at night time when temperature was low so this graph is moving towards contraction this is the joint is contracting and this reading was taken at 8 30 am this was in the summer season so due to 
heat the joint has been expanded and this you can see that toward the graph is moving toward the dilation side but in this picture you can see this is elastic if it is expanding then it is contracting due to temperature temperature variation it is expanding and dilation and it is coming it is elastic movement you can see so it is not once it is expanded and it if it does not come back it means that it is a stability problem so in this graph you can say this is dilation and contract contraction with respect to the temperature variations next is block joints in concrete dams open elastically with temperature variations in elastic openings indicate the development of a problem and reservoir loads also as i have shown you in the previous picture i will show you again that picture in this picture you see the water is exerting pressure on the dam so it will cause its deformation and it should be elastic deformation if water pressure is relieved it should come back i will show you another graph showing its elastic movement due to this pressure of water in this graph you see a surface marker was installed at the crest of a dam and daily it its it was its movement was observed so this is the reservoir level upstream reservoir level so this is low and that it increase then stable and then comes down so these are the daily readings of reservoir level with respect to that the measurements of surface marker this is if graph is moving toward this side it means it is moving toward downstream side and if graph is coming toward this side it means it is coming upstream side <clears throat> so you see as the water level rise here you can see the movement towards the downstream side then it became stable it came back and its variation you can see that with respect to these small variations it is behaving that this it is moving towards downstream side when reservoir level rises and it comes you, you see here it comes down it comes back towards upstream side when reservoir level that water head is reduced into the in the reservoir thank you